Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. We've got a lot done. We're still getting a lot done. And our political system helped make these things possible. And then the list could go on. There's no doubt America's better off today than when I took office. And that is the voice of President Obama. Welcome. This is the Savage Nation. This is John DePietro filling in for Dr. Michael Savage. Michael, never fear, will be back tomorrow. But in the meantime... You can log on, michaelsavage.com, the doctor's website, latest headlines. Also, why not subscribe to the Savage Newsletter? You can also order right now Michael's new ebook, Diseases Without Borders, where the timing is just incredible, isn't it? We're going to talk about the latest outbreak and just what that means for the United States. Diseases Without Borders. Find out about that and a lot more right on the website. It's michaelsavage.com. Also, you're on Facebook. Good. You can check out the page for Michael Savage on Facebook. It's just Michael Savage. You'll also see the photo of the cover of Ground Zero, Government Zero. Find that on Facebook. And then you can also follow the Savage Nation on Twitter at A Savage Nation on Twitter. If you'd like to be part of the program today, you can dial us up 1 855 400 Savage 1 855 400 7282. Well, you just heard President Obama talking about things that they're still getting done. You know, it's interesting. This is also some of the rewriting of history that you're about to hear between now and the end of this year. Actually, the end of the Obama presidency. But there's a story in New York Magazine. That's out today that I I think is interesting because it hits to the the background of this. And the headline of of the story is the big fight in the Democratic primary is whether President Obama succeeded. And they ask that question and they talk about when faced with attacks from Bernie Sanders and ties to Wall Street, Hillary Clinton has tied herself to President Obama. Now, keep in mind what just happened the other night in New Hampshire. Wasn't it great? I mean, the Clinton machine was absolutely shellacked in New Hampshire. Shell-shocked. She had to go out on stage. She had led by as much as, what, 54 points, 34 points, and then was absolutely trounced by Bernie Sanders. But New York Magazine raises the question, has the Obama presidency been a rousing success or a disappointment? What do you think? Has the Obama presidency been a rousing success or a disappointment? First time callers are welcome. One eight five five four hundred Savage. I think one of the reasons for the article has to do with, you know, when you think about it, how people judge the president and how they answer that question, how you would answer that question, or just how regular Voters would answer that question. Has the Obama presidency been a rousing success or disappointment? The Clinton campaign have tied everything to the idea that it's been a huge success. That Hillary wants to continue almost like a third term of the Obama presidency. And what happens in New Hampshire? What has happened in the national polls? Bernie Sanders, a socialist, has absolutely, number one, crushed her in New Hampshire and then climbed to the lead... He's pouring in money, fundraising, over $7 million since the win in New Hampshire. Continues to gain traction in other states. Sanders is going to have the money. But the problem for the Clinton campaign is this idea that somehow if she views the Obama presidency as a rousing success, I would, I would not classify it that way. I can't speak for him, but I don't think Dr. Savage would classify it that way. I mean, has the country, do you ever remember the country in such disarray? 
the problems we've had. We haven't had these types of problems, really, when you think about it. Just the divide in race since the civil rights struggle of the 60s. And even then, that was, you know, a long way to go, and there, there was room for that. But the country, do you ever remember the country is divided as it is now? Look at just the fighting in the streets. What has happened, even? And you can't escape it anywhere. You put on the Super Bowl. And at halftime, I mean, of all the people that Beyonce kind of do, could have done a salute to, was it done for the for the armed forces? Was it done for, for anyone positive? No. Who was it for? The Black Panthers. For the Black Black Lives Matter movement, which is anti-police. I mean, there's a, there's a tone that has taken hold in the country since President Obama has been in office. I, I think it's getting, I think it's getting worse. Even his signature piece of legislation, you hear people obviously against with Obamacare. So when when you think about it, it's almost comical that Hillary Clinton would try to run on and linking herself to President Obama when very few, if any, would view his presidency as anything other than a disaster. I mean, isn't it? I find it so refreshing when you hear in the Republican debates, whether it be Marco Rubio or Ted Cruz or obviously Donald Trump, anyone like that who then starts to tear in to the Obama legacy or just the problems that have been created under this president. And right now, even, you know, Bernie Sanders, to his credit, has ripped into Hillary and her ties with Wall Street and the big banks and the problems within the country. And even Bernie Sanders, a socialist, doesn't try to pretend that the Obama presidency has been a rousing success, as Hillary would would make you think. No, I, I think it's been a terrible disappointment. I think it it came in false, and it's only gotten worse as time has gone along. And I think that's, I mean, don't you, that's one of the reasons that why people are so angry. As much as the media and other people want to ignore what happened in New Hampshire, how do you ignore the fact that Trump and Bernie Sanders, they, they didn't just win in New Hampshire, they crushed the opposition in New Hampshire. And you could say, well, you know, Trump is just so angry and tapping into anger. But if things were going well, people wouldn't be so angry. And Donald Trump just didn't win with the Republicans. He won with a lot of independents. And Bernie Sanders, does he talk like someone that thinks that things are going in the right direction and the things are good? Hardly. He tears into it and tears in. The only one that seems to think that is the person that walked on stage. And the only demo that she won was older women. Younger women don't even want to support Hillary Clinton. As she tries to pretend that everything has just been fantastic and great and wants to continue a third term. 1-855-400-SAVAGE. We're going to start line one. Joe is listening on WFAY. Joe, this is John DiPietro, and you're first up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Joe. Hi, Mr. Savage. How are you doing? I'm a first-time caller. Well, this is not the doctor. I'm filling in. I'm I'm just merely a fill-in for Dr. Savage. But go right ahead, Joe. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I apologize. That's not a problem at all. It's a huge compliment to be mistaken for Dr. Savage. Go right ahead, Joe. I love the show. Hey, listen, um, I, I am a firm believer that Obama has been the, the biggest detriment to this country uh, since day one. Uh, he, you know, with his um, his favoritism of certain people and and not the others. I mean, it, it, I've got a calendar or a countdown timer on my phone that's for 343 days, 20 hours, 45 minutes, and 12 seconds. <laughs> but who's counting, right, Joe? Joe, can I ask who are you supporting in the race for president? Uh, Donald Trump. You are. You're a Trump supporter. I am a Trump supporter. I feel that this country no longer needs politicians running it. We finally need a successful businessman to pull this country back into where it was great. I mean, people would flock to this country because it was uh, the land of opportunity and um, and you felt protected here. I do not feel protected unless I've got my own pistol. Um, I, I just uh, I just find that you know he has just destroyed our our beliefs, what our forefathers have created, um, everything. I mean, it's just I, I just cannot. Uh, 
cannot express more how happy I will be when he is finally out of there and we can get someone <laughs> in there that can straighten our country back out and bring it to the great, wonderful country that our servicemen and women have fought and died for. Joe, that, w- that was a big-time win for Trump in New Hampshire the other night, wasn't it? I loved it. I thought that was great. And uh, I actually um, you know, had to laugh at Hillary when she uh, brought up the statement of... Uh, there's a special place in hell for women that don't support women. And I looked at that, I couldn't believe what she said because a few years ago she had made the comment when uh, the federal government had all these layoffs and this woman said to her, um, who's actually back during her uh, first run for president, that uh, I've never done anything else. You know, what am I going to do? And she goes, oh, well, you're an intelligent person. You'll find something. You know, it's like, well, aren't you? her, you know. I mean, I just right. almost died. Well, Joe, Joe, thank you for the call. It was actually Madeleine Albright that issued that statement, and uh, and, and boy, that that was just a, a bellwether of things to come. I mean, it, it was a complete disaster. The New Hampshire primary and and Hillary having to go on stage with all the expectations. And how about, I love the fact they just keep showing former President Clinton with, you know, I'm the, New Hampshire's made me the comeback kid, and and then her crying in the diner from 2008, and then uh, you know coming back and beating Obama. That that was a when you that was that was a, a big time win by Bernie Sanders and of course by Trump. Let's go to line nine. Robin is listening on WMAC in Georgia. Robin, this is John DePietro, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Robin. Yes, I think President Obama has done an excellent job due to the fact that he has gone against right-wing conservative talk shows just like Michael Savage because everything, you know, they talk about the man and Dan Graydon and everything else too, but all over this he has still come out with the health care, the affordable care, of course something had to be done about it because of the hospital, even you go at the emergency room, they're going to charge you over a $1,000 just to see your face. Robin, no one, Robin, no one's happy with Obamacare. That's going to be overturned. No, it's not going to be overturned because we're going to get a Democrat into the office, and we definitely need a Democrat to decide we don't need a, a president like Trump who, you know, for five for bankruptcy or well, full time. You know, you send it for the business. If you fire for the business and uh, lose all that money, then what do you think you do with the nation? You do the same so, thing, too. So, Rob, Robin, I just want to be – you feel the president has been a great success because of you. You feel because he's overcome criticism from talk radio. Is that correct? That is correct, because, like I said, Michael said, we get on this Joe, program every day and talk about well, he, it. And, he, and the, the, the doctor has spread the truth about it. But, Robin, don't you think, can't we set the bar a little bit higher for the leader of the free world than trying to do battle with radio talk show host? I mean, it, it, it's a whole world out there. Don't you agree, Robin? And he's had done a great job against all of the Putin, because, like I said, that Michael said, due to the fact that he's from Russia. <laughs> I I don't think the president has done a great job against Putin, uh, Robin. Again, thank you for the call. I I think you're alone in that one. And if President Obama's biggest goal was just to try to do battle with the radio talk show host, I think he didn't have to run for president. He could have just shown up at a panel of talkers. But I don't know if he had to uh, actually run to become the leader of the free world. We'll come back, take more of your phone calls. Also, Trump and the news, we'll talk about that. The latest, is there is, of course, the big Democrat uh, debate tonight between Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton. We'll take all your phone calls, again, at 1-855-400-SAVAGE. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. You're listening to The Savage Nation. are worried well i'm going to get yelled at by here or this blogger is going to write that or you know this talk show host is going to talk about me and suddenly i've got a challenger and 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 calling me a rhino or a, you know the uh, not 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 a real progressive that's president obama welcome you're listening to the savage nation this is john DePietro filling in for dr michael savage make sure you visit our website it's michaelsavage.com. And, of course, you're welcome to call into the program at 1-855-400-SAVAGE. New York Magazine with a story that they feel the big fight in the Democratic primary is whether or not, in fact, President Obama has succeeded. And they ask the question, has the has the Obama presidency been a rousing success or a disappointment? I, I, I think most people would say it's been an incredible disappointment bordering on 